Tokyo Dome City is an amusement park located right in the heart of downtown Tokyo and is mostly famous for their massive intimate hypercoaster Thunder Dolphin. Now I've already done a review of Thunder Dolphin on this channel so be sure to go check that out if you want in-depth thoughts about that but for this video I wanted to focus on the park. And this is an interesting place. They don't have a ton of rides but what they do have is pretty good. Now as you can expect with a downtown amusement park this place is free to enter. It's surrounded by roads on all sides so there's multiple places that you can just walk in. It's not like most traditional amusement parks where there's a single entrance and you pay at the gate. For this place, you pay per ride. You can get a wristband or you can do what I did and you can get a deal that includes a certain number of rides. I got a ticket package that included five rides on anything. They just give you five tickets and then whenever you go to ride something, you hand one over and then eventually you run out. I chose to use mine on three rides on Thunder Dolphin, one on the Hubless Ferris Wheel and then one on Panic Coaster Back Dan which is the second roller coaster at this park. Now, eventually, one of my friends did give me an extra ticket of theirs, so I was able to score an extra ride on Thunder Dolphin, but I thought overall this was a pretty good package deal. I felt like it was good value, and I wasn't really missing out on a whole lot. I mean, it meant I wasn't able to do the log flume, or they had like a parachute drop, but you know, I wasn't really upset about not being able to ride those things. One thing that some of my friends did do, though, was they bought an unlimited ride option that was a little bit more expensive, but it was only good after a certain time. I wanted to say Tokyo Dome City closed at 9 or 10 the night we were there and it was probably an after 6 deal where you get unlimited rides for a discounted price but it's only good in the last few hours the park is open. And I recommend either one of those options, especially if you're there in the evening, because then you can also get night rides. So a good chunk of the time that we were at this park was in the evening, which was actually really nice, because in Japan, a lot of the parks closed early, aka around five or six. So it was nice that we got to visit a park that was open late. And the place is not that big, so I don't think you're gonna need a ton of time here, even if you do get an unlimited ride package. This is a place that you come to to spend a couple hours. If you were just coming for Thunder Dolphin, you'll be in and out in no time. Now talking about the park itself, it's kind of split up into two halves. There's the main portion where you have Thunder Dolphin and the wheel, and then you can cross under a road to go onto the other side that has the parachute drop, panic coaster back dan, and some kitty rides. And I think it's pretty easy to get all caught up on the area that Thunder Dolphin's in that you could miss that whole other section of the park. If you aren't wandering around looking for this panic coaster, you could easily miss it, mainly because it's underground. You have to cross under a road, and then once you're on the other side, you then have to go down some stairs where you'll find the other roller coaster. And this is a ride you will not want to miss. I have not done a review of it on this channel because it's completely indoor and part of the experience it is pitch black in there so I don't have any footage of it but I'm going to tell you about this ride and this is one that I highly recommend watching a POV if you know that you aren't gonna be visiting anytime soon if you are gonna be visiting soon maybe don't listen to this portion of the video because actually if you go in with no prior knowledge about this coaster you're gonna be floored because I certainly was this is a pretty new roller coaster it actually just opened last year in 2019 so we wrote it in its opening year and it was was excellent. Probably one of my favorite indoor roller coasters I've ever done. It's a Gerslauer family coaster. It goes forwards and backwards, has a forwards and backwards launch, and only one station. So what happens is you launch out, you go through the course in complete darkness, and then you come back through the station and hit the brakes, except now you're facing the opposite direction. The track ends in a dead end, kind of like Fire Chaser Express's station. So that means you then have to go through the entire course backwards in order to end back up in the same spot. Except when you go through backwards, they turn on the lights, they turn on the music, and it is a party. There's a bunch of globes that light up and dance to music, and it is awesome. It is so much fun. Seriously, go watch a POV of this thing. It is incredible. Panic Coaster Back Dan. Weirdest part about it, though, had nothing to do with the ride. For loose articles, you have to put them in a sack and then ride with it. So I had a big old backpack with me, and I had to literally put my backpack in a bag and then put it at my feet. So I was like, why can't I just put it at my feet? I don't know. But you have to put it in a giant sack. Very strange. But if I had more tickets, I probably would have ridden Panic Coaster again. It was great. Sleeper hit of this park, by far. Now I want to talk about this observation wheel. It's called Big O. Of course, it has that hubless design, and it's very cool looking. Actually, when you get up to the top of it and you're that high up, 
and you're able to look down and see that there isn't a hub, it's pretty freaky. This is one of my favorite observation wheels I've ever done. I did it at night. You get a fantastic view of Tokyo and you have two different options of what kind of pod to ride in. You can ride in the normal one or you can ride in the karaoke pod where they have a bunch of songs and then you sing and party with your friends. It is so weird. We definitely did not do that, but we saw it was an option and we were like, what the heck? Very bizarre. But hey, if you like that kind of thing, I mean, go for it. A few other points I'll make about the park before I wrap things up. In that main section by Thunder Dolphin, the place is kind of made up into levels. There's three main floors. You can access them by stairs or by elevator. You'll find multiple restaurants. The actual main ticket booth is on the first floor underneath Thunder Dolphin's first drop. So that's probably the first place you'll want to go. The actual entrance to Thunder Dolphin, I believe, is on the second floor. And then the observation wheel entrance is on the third floor. And I never rode the log flume, so I don't know what floor that one's on. But it's also kind of cool because they have retail and shopping experiences right there in the park. It's that building that part of Thunder Dolphin pops up onto. I guess that whole area is called La Croix. I went in there briefly. I wasn't there to shop, so I didn't spend a whole lot of time there. But they do make it kind of nice that if you're going with a group of people, not everyone wants to ride. There are things for them to do. Like I mentioned, there's restaurants there. Lots of seating areas. Places you can just hang out. The general atmosphere is pretty neat. It's such an urban park, and they really encapsulated that feel. Very different feel than all almost every other park we went to in Japan. In a way, it didn't feel very Japanese because it didn't have a lot of the weird quirks that some of these other parks had. The weirdest thing there was Panic Coaster back then. But I think that's gonna do it for this review. I, I like this place. I think it's a must visit if you're in Tokyo and a coaster enthusiast. It's just so neat. And because it's not a big time commitment, and with its stellar location, I think non-coaster enthusiasts will be able to enjoy this place too. It's just a neat place to go. But I want to hear from you guys. If you've been in Tokyo Dome City, what do you think of this place? If you agree with my thoughts, if you hope to visit one day, if this review helped you, let me know all that down below. And of course, stay tuned for more videos here at Coaster Studios, and I'll see you next time.